If there's one thing that my family and friends know me for, it's being an amazing gift giver. I owe it all to Celebrations Passport from 1-800-Flowers.com, my one-stop shopping site that has amazing gifts for every occasion. With Celebrations Passport, I get free shipping on thousands of amazing gifts. And the more gifts I give, the more perks and rewards I earn. To learn more and take your gift giving to the next level, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash ACAST. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash ACAST. Uh, right, OK, ladies and gents, boys and girls, a legend that is um, of days gone by, but obviously still a legend nowadays, it is the one and only Martin Granger. Hello, Martin. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing good, sir, yourself? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I beg your pardon? I said thanks for having me. Oh, no, it's an absolute pleasure, my friend. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, first off, on behalf of every Birmingham City fan, uh, I think what I will say for those that remember you playing is thanks for the memories. And there were some, well, there were some absolute you. beauties. Oh. Yeah, mate, I tell you what. Um... I still love you, Martin. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, what are you doing with life nowadays, then, Martin? Uh, these days, I'm an, I'm an actual qualified train driver. A qualified so, train driver? Weekend, which I'm really enjoying. Was that uh, something, as a kid, you always wanted to do? Nah. No. <laughs> Just fell but into it. I always wanted to be in football, but I mean, the reason I'm probably not in football these days is because my, my eldest son is a professional at Leighton. Yes, he is, yeah. Um, and my youngest, or I've been coaching his team now since I was six, seven years old, so I didn't want to miss out on any of their weekends, so he took a back step uh, for me um, so I could spend the time with him. Uh, quite a few people are making making comments. The G-Man played with a broken leg, Ledge. Uh, best left back I've ever seen down the blues from Sean Green. And that free kick against Man United. Always oh, remember God. that from Steve Kindred. Uh, Stuart Kindred, do beg your pardon. Uh, keep right on, G-Man. The G-Man. G-Man, brilliant player. Uh, you've been grangered. <laughs> <laughs> Benji Smith says, evening, Mart. Uh, Fontaine, Ian Fontaine says, Ledge. So not a, not a single bad comment coming through about you, mate. So uh, we still love you just as much as we always did. That's very nice. Um, Obviously, people know what I think I feel about the club. I spent a lot of time there. Um, the whole, my whole family's there for seven or eight years. Just holds a special place within inside me. It was uh, 226 appearances for the Blues. You did. Yeah, it should have been a lot more. Um, unfortunately, really. Well. Actually, but, um, Even I get them, and that's just through walking. <laughs> yeah, that's the only disappointing thing, really. When we get to where we wanted to be, and it fell apart for me. But uh, at least I was part of getting to. Who was your first game against? Uh, Barry Fry. We when Barry Fry bought me, we played Grimsby away, and come and put his arm around my shoulder and said, "Mark, oh, can you play right back?" <laughs> and so what I position was you playing? It was a two-one defeat, but um, yeah, my debut was right back instead of left back. Okay. And can you play right back? <laughs> yeah, it's right anywhere. It's easy anywhere. Football, anyway. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Dean Lane, I say, could there be a bad comment? He's a player that we all... Uh, that Granger double tackle at Gillingham. Do you remember that one? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah I've done the lads a favour, to be fair, because after I got sent off, we went and won 2-1. Oh, right. And, okay. one down. <laughs> and Des Fox is asking, did you ever play against them up the street? Did I ever, sorry? Did you ever play against them across the expressway? I can't say the word related. Uh, yeah, we, uh, it was the first um, derby in the Premier League. I think we actually won, was it 2-0 or 3-0 at home? Where Inkelman um, had the old famous throw one under his foot. Oh, uh, yeah. I knew the rules. I've literally, I've just got back from Florida, <laughs> got off the plane. <laughs> Drove back home and uh, found the only pub in town that had got that game on and uh, and, and watched watched it uh, in the pub. So, yeah. I, I, actually don't you, think he, um, <laughs> I actually don't think I've, he touched it, but his reaction made the referee's mind up. Yeah, and uh, I've actually just got in touch with the guy who ran on the pitch afterwards. <laughs> oh, the one that slapped <laughs> yeah. ankle, man? Yeah, oh, okay. just gave him the, uh, the little... The little... <laughs> Gave him a little salute. Alison Shilton, I'm swooning over Mr. Granger, the ledge, and can we yeah. sign his son? Uh, so your son's playing professionally now then for Luton, did you say? Leighton Orient. Leighton Orient, beg your pardon, Leighton Orient. I'm never going with an L. We've got the world's <laughs> worst memory. <laughs> <laughs> How's it getting on? Yeah, um, they started off um, quite well. They, they, they started off, I mean, the first six or seven games I was up in the top six, but they've had a real bad run. At the moment, they've had quite a few e players, and it's only, I think they've only put points up in the last 27. Yeah. Um, they've dropped down the league, but they're, they're doing well in games, but they're just not scoring. Um, on an on personal note, Charlie's doing all right himself at the moment. Um, he's putting in some performances, so that's pleasing to him. Um, the team needs to start picking up a few points, unfortunately. But it's going to be a long process. I mean, they had a couple of years um, with some Italian owners that 
sort of they, it was a di- downward spiral since they took over. Um, and the new owners, uh, Ken T, the CIO at Dunkin' Donuts, and, uh, and he's told the fans it's going to be a four or five year project, and um, we're going to have some rough times, we're going to have some good times. So they're doing it in the right way, but with small steps. But they really need to start picking up a few points, and hopefully they can do that tomorrow night. They've got gates set at home. Cracking, right? I, th- I think though, if uh, an owner or you know somebody at the top end of a club comes out and says, you know, we've got a four or five year plan for this club, uh, I think every supporter would be on board with you it. You prefer that? We've obviously had a difficult yeah, difficulties, I, I think <laughs> difficulties over the last few years. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because they're a relatively club for that division. Yeah. Um, everyone expects, oh, we'll go and sign a lot of players. We'll do this. We'll do that. But I think the previous owners, I think, racked up a little bit of debt. Yeah. Um, and they're 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 doing it in the right way small steps. I mean, if supporters know that, then, I mean, they are getting a little bit disgruntled at the moment, because obviously they're not winning. Um, it's like the same situation with Birmingham, isn't it? They're at the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're not winning, people will start venting their anger. Um, but hopefully they'll um, they'll turn it round and, and, and just put, if they put four or five wins together, they'll be back on the top. Ah, cracking. So Gentlemen, here, uh, Pete that. Taylor says that he wore the number three shirt for every team he played for because I wanted to play four back like Martin Granger. Some <laughs> cracking comments going through, yeah. Um, Des Fox says there's a four to five week plan at St Andrews by the look of it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, great seeing Martin at the Blues 250 Club event from Bic. Uh, special night and great recognition for the service to Blues. Um, Bic does a lot of work with the, uh, the youth, doesn't he? The kids around the, around the city and that, so cracking guy, yeah. Uh, Matt Davis, best Granger memory was first promotion season against Sheffield United as Martin stepped up to take a free kick at St Andrews. Uh, St Andrews erupted into keep right on. As the song ended, the ball at the back of the net, absolutely amazing. So he has some brilliant memories all around. SRB Media. Tony Grogan says Blues need to show some VTs of Granger to the squad. And can you ask Martin which ex-player he's still in touch with, more importantly, who he tees off with? That's from Adam Wilkes. Who he tees off? I, I, I don't play so much golf these days because I, I, I have a little bit of a back problem. But uh, I still speak to Darren Purse now and then. Um, and then, I mean, you've got John O, uh, Devlin, Orsfield. Like, you have little Twitter comments here and there, yeah. Curtis Woodhouse. But not too many, to be fair. You all live in different parts of the country. Um, um, I speak to Andrew Johnson quite a bit, to be honest. AJ, cracking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, a. I think he's ambassador for Crystal Palace now and he's uh, part of a football agency. So I had a chat with him a little while ago, just just about life. He's OK and doing well. Brilliant. Paul um, H- but not too many, to be honest. Loads and loads of questions coming in for you, my friend. Paul Hickey says, the best player you've ever played with? Ooh. Oh, well, like, to be fair, it's not a tough thing. I mean, I didn't play that many with him because at the time I was in it, but Christoph Dugri yeah, absolutely. had absolutely. Yeah, what a man. Uh, Mark Hopkins, best Granger goals was a solo run, rocket the ball to the back of the net. Gids did the same on that day and got all the press. Granger by far the best. Um, <laughs> somebody just asked Chris Brown if, if you're King Jong Um in the corner. <laughs> 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 you need to visit my son's barbers, matey. SRB Media. Robert Doyle wants to know your best memory of the Blues. Best memories. Um, always reflect back to the the best ever atmosphere I ever played in front of uh, the Blues was a four-one win semi final against. Uh, it's with Do you know what? Like that. Exactly what I, I, I was I, I was absolutely convinced that that was the, on the golden goal. And I was, <laughs> now his first goal, he <laughs> yeah, scores. No, I know, but when the, <laughs> in the first first half, I was convinced it was golden goal. I was jumping over the chairs and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the kickoff happened again. <laughs> <laughs> but that that sticks out massively, and obviously after the like the foul, the three foul playoff defeat, yeah. then getting to the Millennium Stadium and. How Darren Carter for putting in the penalty. It is a story that I tell on here very often, and uh, that uh, that game against Ips, which I took a profoundly deaf lad to that football match, and it was the first time he ever heard anything in his life. Yeah, uh-huh. and that was the whistling right at the end. It, it was. My ears are still ringing from it. <laughs> yeah, it was an unbelievable <laughs> day. But then I, mean, I, I done a little interview when, when I come to the two fifty club when we uh, when we went into the second game at Millwall. I just knew you just had the feeling we was going to get promoted. It was that it was our time this time. Mm. And um, we just had the belief in the dressing room that we wasn't going to get beaten when we got there. All right, OK. Um, carrying on then, um, Harry Griffiths wants to know, ask him what it was like in the tunnel against Villa. Horsfield said that they used to use some dirty tactics. Yeah, there's a few <laughs> few words said. I mean, they're, they're the so-called big premiership football club and, and you just fire each other up and oh, a yeah. bit of screaming and shouting and eyeballing, you know, and um, I think they come out and frighten to death. Personally, mm. 
and we totally took it to them, and I thought we was far the better team for the 90 minutes. When we were robbed in the um, uh, Worthington Cup final, uh, yeah. and, uh, and we were robbed, how did, how, did, how did the team, how did you cope that afterwards? Because I know, I, I, I know as a supporter, like, I mean, I, I think it was David Ellery, the referee, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I believe if we didn't have a Premiership referee that day, we would have had the penalty in the yeah, last minute. Absolutely. Um, uh, because we was Birmingham from the Championship, we did, we didn't get it. But I mean, oh, there was we. I thought we played so well that day for a Championship side against one of Europe's biggest clubs. Mm. Uh, I, I thought we deserved to win the game. Wasn't to be. Um, very very disappointing. I mean, I was heartbroken Brit, missing the penalty. Um, but then no one mentions mine because always everyone always remembers AJ's, unfortunately. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, him. yeah, but. Uh... But yeah, it was very, it was very hard to pick yourself up from that. Uh, you just feel like you let let everyone down, your family that's watching, and just guided really, mm. um, because that should have been ours. We've just put a photograph of you up on the uh, uh, Facebook live page of you holding the uh, trophy at the Millennium. Is yeah, it? just after that, it looks like uh, you got your little Charlie old it. He dropped it and it bent. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> It was that heavy. I forgot. I forgot how heavy it was, and I give it to him. He just dropped it, and the bottom <laughs> part just bent up at a ninety degree angle. Oh dear! Uh, off to the jewellery quarter for that then. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, Ken Plus, the best game was a vile game on a Tuesday night, two thousand and three, first derby in the Premiership. And Tom Balfour, does this side at the moment have it in them to win this on Sunday? Well, you, you, like I say, on paper, you wouldn't. You would say no because uh, at, I mean Villa have, um, have been pretty consistent over the last couple of months, and obviously Birmingham haven't. But hopefully that all goes out the window, and the twenty nine thousand blue no, blue nose is going to be there can give them another. Well, it looks like they're going to need another seventy percent the way they've been playing. Mm. Um, but hopefully they can, if they get a positive result, we can turn their season around games like this. Yeah, so, it's, fingers it's a, crossed, they can... Um, it is the big one, though, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, I, I missed that. Yeah. Uh, Tony Grogan saying, you didn't let us down, and Dennis Bohemia says, what's uh, Gray just thought on Mr Muscat? <laughs> on Mr Muscat? Yeah. yeah. no comment. No comment, all right, leave it at that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Robert Bird yeah. wants to know if, Robert oh, Bird yeah. wants to know if your son's a blue nose. Sorry, that, that again? Robert Bird wants to know if your son is a blue nose. Uh, they, yeah, they were to a certain degree, but one's a Spurs supporter and one's a Man United supporter. So, <laughs> so they're both Birmingham supporters then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much needle was there between uh, Martin and Muscat? We all we all remember him looking like he wanted to lamp him, Stephen Cale. Yeah, he was just one of those players, Kevin Muscat. He wouldn't tackle you; he'd, he'd do you, and he'd do you off the ball when it was seventy thirty in his favour. Yeah. That's what people used to get the ump with. Um, that's why. I must admit, Trevor used to say to leave him alone. But me and Martin O'Connor, we didn't concentrate on the game. We just concentrate on trying to kick him. Mm. <laughs> Which is probably not the best tactics when you've got two players not concentrating on the game in the game after one person. So as a, as a, as a person, taking the football thing uh, aside a little bit, um, what was the feeling like when you knew that that football team had just got into the Premier League? Oh, it was just... It, it's, just a, it's just a dream, isn't it? You, well, it was you always took, mine. <laughs> yeah, you took... Um, I mean, when my dad convinced me about the club, because well, obviously being a southern lad, and I didn't really know how big Birmingham was when they come in for me, and my dad sort of said to me, look, you've got a sleeping giant there, you've, you've got to go, it's a massive club. Um, getting that club to the Premiership was, I mean, I, I would well, I've never achieve anything like that again in my lifetime, obviously, but it was just an unbelievable feeling. Um, but then for me, after... Six games, it fell apart. But at least I was part of the history of getting there. Ah, oh, absolutely superb, mate. I've got goosebumps all over me, honestly. I genuinely mm. mean that. SRB Media. Uh, Brian Johnson, is Martin still in touch with Barry Fry? Uh, not, uh, last time I see Baz was um, my Charlie played for England, uh, in England under 18s a couple of years ago at St George's Park. And uh, I had a chat with him there. But no, not not, not seen too much of Baz, to be honest. Uh-huh. I mean, since, since when I finished, I sort of... Stayed away, out of the way of football for a little bit. Um, just kept me head down and just got on my life, basically. There's a gentleman here called Paul Ipkiss is constantly asking, who is the worst player you've ever played with? <laughs> uh, Ferdinand Coley. Who? <laughs> Ferdinand Coley. Oh, Ferdinand Coley. <laughs> he played in Serie A, I think, and he was possibly the worst right-back I've ever seen. 
Oh, you ain't seen me play. <laughs> <laughs> and he's played in a World Cup, I believe. Yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, Dennis is asking, who's the best manager you've ever had? Ooh, I'm going to go back to my youth team days. My old youth team manager, Steve Foley. Steve Foley, yeah. He was unbelievable. He was, he was the best coach and the best man manager I think I've ever played for. Hmm. Yeah, it's Did you mean at Birmingham City? Uh, and I think you meant anywhere. Well, yeah. I mean, at Birmingham City, to be fair, uh, Baz was the best 10 weeks for entertainment in my career. I can imagine. We've tried to get him in, you know. I've written to him a few times, but... Uh, oh, he, he's brilliant. He, what a character. He don't answer. <laughs> 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 and uh, did you ever sniff the flag? That's from Robert Doyle. Sniff the flag? <laughs> it's all right. Right. OK, you know... <laughs> Sometimes before games, they bring this enormous flag around, yeah? Oh, right. And it starts off in the corner of the Tilton and then goes round the cop, yeah? You know the one, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You know the one, Martin? Yeah. Well, it stinks like an old shed. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, when I'm there, son, if he comes around, I'll have a sniff. Well, everybody dreads it coming past them, to be honest with you. Cause, oh, no, the flag's coming out, it stinks. and It's, a, it's just a, a really long joke on here about the smelly flag. Uh, <laughs> 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 Who was that, you? That was you, was it? <laughs> I think Martin's passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, I may jump. <laughs> uh, did it ever kick off in training sometimes, says Christian Treadwell? Yeah, you'd have your disagreements. I mean, I mean, I mean, I used to train, I used to like to train how I played, so I would tackle people in training. Right. Darren Purse was the same. Um, and you get a few people who wouldn't like it, but if, if you play like, if you train how you play, then you'll, you'll play like that on a Saturday. Mm. And, and we always used to, always used to fly in training. And Adrian Howell says, Martin, would you be interested in getting back into pro football coaching, maybe? Um, yeah, possibly one day. It just depends what, what the role is and where it is, really. And I wouldn't say no. And Steve Cahill says he win the George before the game on Sunday. Oh, I've got the missus, so probably not. No. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Where do people look out for you then? If uh, if which, which one are you going to? Uh, I'm going. I've been invited to uh, to do. I think it's a Jasper Carrot Suite. I think I've been oh, up right, there. Yeah. We've been invited yeah. for a meal, and I think we're poshing it for the day. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. I probably, I, I probably, I prefer to be out in the stands with yeah. the normal people. But there you go. <laughs> uh, Joe uh, Britland says, "Was it true about Granger and Mooney having a, a bust up in the changing rooms at Warsaw away? What was it about?" It, it was the Sheffield United away. Sheffield United away. So no, it wasn't yeah. true then, was it? <laughs> 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 yes, there was a few arms thrown about. Yeah, it happens, doesn't it? It happens. Yeah. 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 Well, it, the thing is. Things flare up, things happen, and you get on with it. You were right up there, uh, right by the main stand, uh, not the main stand, the, um, uh, what they call it now, what's the railway end, we'll call it, because that's yeah. how I've always known it, yeah? yeah. Um, and I think it was a Tuesday night, a sunny Tuesday night, and a guy had his leg broke quite seriously. Uh, Tom Bennett. Tom Bennett, that's the man, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I wrote to him, actually, uh, after the afterwards and got a very nice letter back as well, and from the club. Um, I'd just like you to know that I heard that snap in the tilt, then. Oh, uh, do you know... <laughs> What, 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 the, the guy took the free kick and he sort of floated it and I yeah. was I had my eyes on the ball and I just put my foot up to yeah. kick the ball and he didn't see me coming and he tried to uh, teapot volley it and his shin hit the bottom of my foot yeah and he said uh, yeah I can still it's too like there's like two snooker balls going together I can still hear it now yeah yeah, well, I, said, yeah so, I, said, I said to him I'm a second I heard it I said that's a break that's gone yeah, I was yeah just, it wasn't a... I was, I was, well, you, you were both on the floor. I was just hoping, were you? <laughs> yeah, you'd be before yeah, my time. Not a nice, nice one. No, no, not no. Not for him. No, no. But also no. not for you that you, you've done it as well. Yeah. Uh, Christian Treadwell again, which player did you dread playing against? Dread playing against? Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to... I mean, people with skill and pace, you sort of, they're sort of half predictable, but the, the people that used to give you give me trouble... Is people like uh, I'm not just blowing smoke up his backside. Is Paul Devlin, John McCarthy, Gareth Ainsworth, because uh, those uh, those sort of players. I mean, if I had a winger up against me, my first if I could in the first five minutes stick a real hard challenge on you, I know you're not going to come back to me for another 25, 30 minutes. You're not going to fancy it. Yeah. But Paul Devlin, John McCarthy, and Gareth Ainsworth, a lot of the time. You'd be looking up at the sky where they've, they've topped you up now. 
But I, I used to enjoy those days. But they they were the sort of winger who who were direct, quite pacey, not particularly the, the most skillful wingers in the world. But they were direct and they were effective what they done. Mm. But they also they also liked to challenge. Mm. They liked to stick their foot in as well. So yeah, they they were a pain in the backside to be honest. Was there a team you ever dreaded coming to St Andrews? A team we dreaded coming to St Andrews. Yeah. No, I didn't fear anyone now. Yeah. Nobody. To be honest. No. Because yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson is well known for saying the place that he dreaded coming most was St Andrews. Did he? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not being funny. When it's a full house, there ain't no better atmosphere. No, there's no, is there? No. And what's it really, 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 really like? You know, because like, we stand on the terraces and sing keep right on to the end of the road. But as a player, you know, like if a goal we've just netted or, or you're just walking out, how, 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 does, how does that anthem as a player make you feel? Goosebumps. No, I've got it. It's like when I go back to the Ipswich game. Yeah, I've got the yeah, are standing up on my arms now. I might not. Every, every, every time you mention it, look, I'm terrible. I was really, I was really young with this game. So I still yeah. remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> um, um, apart from Grange himself, who else was the club's dressing hard man from Sunny Albemud? Well, Martin O'Connor, Darren Purse. Yeah. Paul Devlin was a fiery little Rottweiler. <laughs> Jeff Horsfield. Yeah, we've had Devs in. Um, Sorry. Is he tomorrow morning as well? Oh yeah, Debs is uh, starting to do a show here in the in yeah, tomorrow morning. every. Oh, was he? Yeah. Every... Deb, Deb was fiery. He was. He, Deb loved the moan if he didn't give him the ball as well. Every Tuesday morning at um, every a, a bigger pardon, every fortnight. What time, Chris? Uh, around about uh, twelve fifteen. About twelve fifteen. It's a no holes barred Paul Devlin show. You're going to hear everything. Ooh, a lot. A lot. That'd right. Be good. No holes barred. <laughs> there you go. And that's every two weeks. Uh, Brian Johnson says Daisy. Yeah, he was a fiery character and all, wasn't he? Yeah, I, mean, I think I was with Daisy um, probably only a couple of weeks. Yeah. As I come in, I think a few people were going out. So he was a real tough cookie as well, big Kev Francis. Kevin Francis, yeah. Yeah, I mean when he, we was there was a few of us. I mean when you get niggly little injuries in the gym, and we had a thirty-two kilo punch bag, and that's the only punch bag I ever heard win. <laughs> when he used to punch it, yeah. Curtis Woodhouse is a tough little cookie as well. Who, sorry? Curtis Woodard. Curtis, well, Curtis, we've had Curtis on the show. He's uh, done a phone in for us as well. Yeah, he yeah. was um, obviously went into the boxing world afterwards, didn't he? Yeah, he was absolutely mental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but a great lad, though. Yeah, great lad. Yeah. Stevie Smith saying Tony Coton, uh, Mick Harford, and yeah. uh, Harry Griffiths says, What was Savage like? Savage? Yeah. Bit of a girl, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if we play that? We've got Ian Dunter in from Talk Sport. Talk... Nah, you, you can play it if you want. But if we play that next week to Ian Dunter off Talk Sports. Uh, yeah, just, go on. I'm just hoping we're all in a good mood next Monday. That's all I'm hoping for, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Martin. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Don't think I'm ever going to that. I know, I never. Well, he's got the air to go with it as well, hasn't he? I beg your pardon? Savage got the air to go with it as well. Not now he hasn't, now he's cut it all off, hasn't he? he like... Oh, yeah, but he's got it even more boof on it now, oh, hasn't he? Oh, dear. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Uh, Kevin McCarthy said that side epitomised... Oh, hang on, I've just lost it. I've lost my thread. Oh, I have to click the wrong button. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll get the thread, what he says, um, sure about every, everything about blues at the time. Um, a dead ball situation, right? Everybody around me, uh, and I was a season ticket holder when you were playing there at the time, everybody around me would just shout, Granger! <laughs> yeah, I mean, as a fullback, you don't get many opportunities. So sometimes you used to have to fight fight uh, devs to um, to take it, but more often than not, he used to let me take him, and I got my first year. Yeah, yeah. Well, what did you score for Blues? Uh, 25 goals. Yeah, something like 25, 28, something like that. 25. I think, I, I think it worked out. I've scored one to games ratio, one every 10. Well, about one every 10. Two 26 games, 25 goals, which is not a bad ratio, yeah, like I say, for a fullback. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah didn't, miss, didn't miss a penalty until I come at Birmingham. I, I, missed, I think I missed five or six. Really? Yeah. <laughs> didn't you ever think of not taking them then? <laughs> yeah, I did. In, well, I didn't get a choice in the end. Yeah, right, OK. So you were playing for Brentford back in uh, 96, and then Birmingham, yeah. Birmingham City come knocking on the door. That must have been quite a feeling. Or, or, yeah, or well, were you aware? Uh, the, the manager pulled me in the office, uh, David Webb, and um, he said, look, I've had a bid coming to from Birmingham City. Uh, you've got no option. You've got to go. I was right. like, all oh, right, OK. Um, I, I think the club were financially in a bit of a bit of a bad way. Was you happy there at the time? 
Yeah, at the time, I, my family was happy. I was playing. I was playing some of the best football um, to, the, to, to date of my career. And um, so I went out and met me, me dad and said, "Look, Birmingham, come meet me dad. What, what do I do?" And he um, he said, "No." He said, "Son, you got to go." He said, "It's a massive club. It's the sleep, sleeping giant." Mm-hmm. And he, he sort of sold it to me because I didn't really too, know too much of being a youngster from North London. You don't really know too much past Watford. Mm-hmm. Um, and he sort of told me a bit about the history of the club and the size of the club, and and, and that was that, really. And I the passion of the supporters. In the Grosvenor Hotel um, with the wife uh, a day later, I think it was at the PFA Awards, and I went up to his room and he answered the door in his shirt, sticky bow and socks and pants. <laughs> <laughs> and we conducted the deal in his, in his bedroom. With, the wife was with me as well, so he's sitting there in his pants and he's tucked in his tucked shirt and sticky bow. Incredible. Yeah, only bad to do that. Yeah, brilliant stuff. SRB Media. It's just not like it used to be. Not like it used to be back in your day, mate, is it? No, well, they've got to forget about the department. And and remember who's paying their wages, all them people that turn up every week. Yeah. You know, you put yourself aside with your petty little arguments with teammates who you don't quite get on with. But when you're on that... When you're on that pitch, you're 11, you do everything you can in your power to win for that blue jersey. You do. I mean, having a little, uh, have the argument afterwards. You know, when you get over that white line, you've just got to put yourself about, give 110%, run harder than them, tackle harder Because like I said on an on a interview I did a little while ago, all these people going about philosophy of football, football ain't changed for 150 years. You've got two, pit, two, two goals, a green pitch, white lines, a football, 11 on each side, be organised and run around and want it more than that. SRB Media. You know, I mean, some, some of them need a rocket up their arse, my friend. <laughs> it's the first foul language we've had on the Talk and Talk show in seven years. He <laughs> 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 did, yeah, he did, yeah. Power, power to the Grange. Yeah, but Grange is allowed. <laughs> it's allowed one. Nobody's going to argue with him, <laughs> mate. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Steve, oh, Stevie Smith says wages seem to be the divide in the dressing room. It's just, it just attitude seems to be the divide. Like... I think we just have a bunch of players that well, you got one half that have come in within the last year or so that are going to be on higher wage than the rest of the boys that were there originally under Rowett, mm. and that, that's that's your divide in the in the dressing room. I think I think it is predominantly down to money. But the thing is, when when you sign a contract, it doesn't matter if it was for Gary Rowett, it doesn't matter if it was for Harry Redknapp. Steve Cottrell, you was happy with the money that you was offered. Yeah, t- totally agree with you. That's so it. if someone comes in and they're on ten thousand pound a week, whatever it is, uh, more than you. Darren Carter you said exactly the eight, same last week. A better job. Um, but you, you was happy with the contract that you signed. So if you're not happy with the contract you signed, Why say you want to leave and give all your money back. Totally agree. Right? Can't argue with that. <laughs> uh, Gary Lomer, Gary, Gary Johnson, beg your pardon, says it's a breath of fresh air. Uh, listening to Martin, old school player, brilliant. And agreed, Mr. Granger, they all need a good, solid kicking from Dean Lomas. Um, well said, that's what we want players to give 100%. Mike Hansen and spot on Kyle Colclough. And what a bloke from Kyle again. So there you go. Well, Martin, listen, um, we've taken up enough of your time, mate. Really, really, really appreciate you coming on. Excellent stuff. And you've now been immortalised on the Tilt and Talk show. Yeah. And uh, we guys here, uh, just to let you know what we're about, do this each and every single week for free. We don't get any money for it whatsoever. We do it for love. No, for love of the blues. <laughs> love of the blues. Chris uh, owns all the uh, the studio and the setup. But then uh, Sam's uh, gallantly stood in for us this evening. Uh, yeah. Myself, I come all the way from Utoxeter, which is up by St George's Park, as you probably know. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what we do. That's what, and we and we do this because, like, we just love the blues, and that's it. That's our contribution to it. Mm-hmm. That's brilliant. Well, thanks for having me. Great show. No, you're if you top man, mate. Again, you... Don't hesitate to give me a call. Yeah, no problem. We'll I do. love you, Martin. Anytime. Thank you, Martin Granger, ladies and gentlemen. What an absolute legend! An absolute legend. SRB Media. If there's one thing that my family and friends know me for, it's being an amazing gift giver. I owe it all to Celebrations Passport from 1-800-Flowers.com, my one-stop shopping site that has amazing gifts for every occasion. With Celebrations Passport, I get free shipping on thousands of amazing gifts. And the more gifts I give, the more perks and rewards I earn. To learn more and take your gift giving to the next level, visit 1-800-Flowers.com slash ACAST. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash ACAST.